All right, everyone, the time has come for this first impressions video of Tom Ford Ombre Leather 2021 Parfum. And of course, Dior Sauvage Elixir. I'm so excited to be bringing this video to you guys today. And I know you're excited too. That's why you clicked on the video in the first place. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and bust these boxes open, get all the noise out of the way, cellophane and all that garbage that you don't want to hear. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Enjoy that intro. I'll be right back. Stay tuned. I do have to mention this before we move forward. For those of you that are returning, I sincerely appreciate your continued support. You know how much it means to me. It means the world to me. You know that. For all of you that are new here, I sincerely appreciate you coming along. My name is Dave. This is Callie's Green Room. On this channel, I love to talk about and discuss what I'm passionate about, and that is the uh, the world of men's grooming, and of course, including the wonderful world of fragrance. I'm so excited about this video today. We already unboxed these. We're going to get into this. Let's uh, let's start off with uh, with Tom Ford Ombre Leather here. As I said, I got rid of all the noise, guys, so we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, I, I was bummed, man. The day that I left for vacation, this fragrance was delivered. And I know what many people are thinking, like, dude, why didn't you just wait till the thing was delivered and take off? Well, I was excited to get the hell out of Pennsylvania. I didn't want to wait. I did order this from overseas when it was dropped just because I'm impatient like that. From uh, the tracking that I received, it should have arrived before I left. It didn't, which, hey, whatever, it's okay. We're here now, right? So, right, let's start things off with the box because, you know, it's been a while since I've done one of these, so forget what I'm doing here, apparently. So here's your box for, uh, for Ombre Leather. You know, the difference between um, Ombre Leather 2021, the Parfum, and uh, in the, the last iteration of Ombre Leather is this has the, uh, the white label. So that's how you can, you know, kind of differentiate from uh, the two. Tom Ford logo bottle looks exactly the same with your batch code information there on the bottom. So let's go ahead, give this a couple sprays and see what we get. Nice distribution, nice atomizer, no plates there. Really nice here. Mmm. So this, <laughs> this reminds me of the inside of a leather handbag that hasn't been finished. That's the type of leather I'm experiencing here. A very nice smelling leather, just for me anyway. This is a very likable leather, a very wearable leather, in fact. This isn't challenging or animalic or anything like that. Very, you know, as far as leather is concerned, this is a very wearable type of leather. So if you like leathers that are not challenging you are probably going to like this. Mmm, this smells really good. Now, this was perfumed by Sonia Constant, who has done, you know, the entire Ombre Leather series. I guess we could call them a series at this, at this point. She's also done one of my favorite, not, not just Tom Ford fragrance, but one of my favorite fragrances of all time, and that's Tom Ford Noir Extreme. She uh, did perfume that, and that's, oh, I love that fragrance, but... Anyway, getting back to this one here. Yes, from what I was reading, um, I, I don't have full note breakdown or anything like that. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to talk about performance here or anything like that. Um, I thought they were going to drop the uh, the fruity, you know, accords that we were accustomed to with the with the other two iterations of Ombre Leather. I am starting to detect that here. I thought there would be a lot more florals than what I'm detecting. So that's interesting here. Huh. So what I would like to do is do a little time lapse here. Let this dry down a bit. Come back in a, in about you know twenty minutes or so, and uh, let you know what I'm experiencing. If anything has changed up to that point. Okay. So at this point, what I could tell you guys is this: um, I'm still getting that. Obviously, leather is going to be at the fore. You know, with a name like Ombre Leather, that's what we would come to expect. But yeah, the leather is there. The leather did not change at all. The way that I described it in the beginning is the same thing as what I'm experiencing now. Very wearable, very likable, nice, smooth, clean, you know, leather. It's not challenging in a way. So this is definitely unisex. I still do detect that fruitiness. If there are florals here, they're very much tucked away in the back. I'm not really experiencing the, uh, the floral tones here on my first impression. Now, 
with full wearing and, you know, full wearings and getting more familiar with the fragrance, that could all change. But right now, not experiencing any of that. So at this point, what I would like to do is move on to Sauvage Elixir. Before I start talking about Elixir, I do want to tell you guys, if you didn't know or if you don't know, uh, I love the Sauvage line. I, I, I really do enjoy the DNA. Now, I know many people out there, you know, in the community, in the world, you know, on YouTube and that think that it's overrated, overhyped, talked about way too much and, you know, hundreds of thousands of people own it and whatever. I don't buy into all that. I like what I like. I love what I love. And I do love the DNA. I will always have a bottle of that in my collection because I like the DNA that much. And I don't really care how many people own it. I will always own it. And that's just my opinion on that. What I will say right off the bat, very nice looking box. Nice thick box. I really do like the uh, the presentation here so far. Sauvage Elixir there. The, uh, the Dior logo here. And here's our bottle. This beautiful fingerprint magnet of a bottle. So you have the uh, the Dior logo there on the inside. I love the attention to detail here. And here is Sauvage Elixir. So very nice. You have the logo on the inside of the cap, as you do with the with the rest of the line here. And I know what you're probably thinking, where's the auto parfum? Well, I will add that at some point. But uh, actually, when I was testing the two, I just like the uh, the parfum the parfum uh, better. Then I like the auto parfum, but whatever. That's a story for another day. But anyway, let's spray this and see what we get. So I'm expecting to experience the DNA. I just hope that they change it, and they did. So you don't get the DNA right up front. Instead, you get a lot of spices going on here. But they're not burn the nostrils or, you know making you have that feeling to where you're going to sneeze type of spice. So with the fresh spicy, things that come to mind to me are like a cardamom, something in that vein. Again, I don't really know the full note breakdown. The only thing that I know about this fragrance, other than it was released in 2021, is that it was perfumed by Francois Demarche, which I don't need to talk too much about Francois. He has an amazing resume. I really like this. This is definitely going to shine in the fall and winter time. That's automatically what my brain is telling me. Although I would be I would be willing to bet that this would be great on a summer date night situation. Definitely. So what I think of Tom Ford Ombre leather, by the way, is I do think it's very unisex. Okay? I don't think it leans you know, masculine or feminine or anything like that. Elixir, on the other hand, is definitely masculine. It's definitely masculine. And if you're expecting to detect that Sauvage DNA right away, that's not happening so far. Very, very interesting. And I very much appreciate the different approach. So what I'm accustomed to with flankers is that they carry that DNA in the beginning, in the opening. And then they kind of transition and become sort of, you know, their own thing in a way. Um, that is not what's happening here. Very, very interesting. I'm very interested here in, in what's going on. So I had mentioned that I got uh, the Tom Ford from Suffrages, that it came overseas and everything like that. So with Elixir, I actually went ahead and bought this from their website. Obviously, I'm letting this dry down a bit so I can see what else I'm going to get off the first impression. So... One of the benefits and perks of buying direct is sometimes you get the choice of free samples. So it came in this, uh, you know, nice Dior pouch there. There's some uh, creams here for my girlfriend to enjoy. Also came with uh, these lipstick samples. So that's how sometimes I get out of getting in trouble when I say, look, though, babe, I got some stuff for you for free. No problem. Sometimes it gets me out of trouble. Sometimes it doesn't. Right now, she's still in vacation mode. So I'm expecting that I'm not going to get in a whole lot of trouble for this purchase. These purchases. <laughs> Ooh. So I, I, I'm detecting this sort of powdery kind of floral tinge here. So it's definitely reminding me of lavender. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting here, like a lavender vibe. 
Very interesting, man. I'm so glad that they decided to sort of go away from the the uh, the Savage, the, the typical, you know, Savage, Ambrox, and Heavy definitely isn't there. Okay, now that Savage DNA is starting to come through. So after a little bit, you start to detect the Savage DNA. It'll be interesting to see if it keeps poking its head out through the life and progression of the fragrance. But right now, what I could tell you is right now it's present. So the Savage DNA is present, but it's not as pronounced as it was so if you aren't a fan of the uh the savage dna if you're not a fan of that at all if you don't like it i do think that this is worth checking out because i think this may be far away uh far enough away from that uh that dna that you may actually enjoy this one you know if you're into fresh spicy fragrances there's definitely like i said the dna is running through there but it's not as pronounced and now we're starting to get a little woody and uh, and earthy as well. So this is a very interesting take on the Sauvage DNA. So at this point, I'm hoping that they continue this trend with Sauvage because I think they're going to, you're going to see tons of flankers of this in the future. I don't think that this is going to be something that they get away from. So mm, I'm really enjoying this one. I, I must say, I, I like... The Tom Ford ombre leather as well, but right now I I feel like all they've done on my first impressions of this, all they've done is really tone down that the dried fruits. I must say, I'm more impressed with Elixir than I am with this. I'm somewhat right now at this moment. I'm a little let down by ombre leather, but we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, I'm going to do a minimum of two complete wearings of both of these fragrances before I come back and do a review for you guys. Again, though, if those florals are here, they're tucked away. At least that's what I'm getting off the first impression. This is really nice. If you guys, Elixir is very nice. So if you're into fresh, spicy type fragrances... You're not a huge fan of the uh, of the, uh, the 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 Sauvage DNA. You may actually enjoy this one. So definitely spray this one on your skin. Do not spray this on a test strip, just so you could experience that that full the the full um, transition and progression of the uh, of the fragrance in its entirety. Don't spray this on a test strip, please. Spray this on skin. Definitely spray this one on skin now. If you love the Sauvage DNA like I do, you may be disappointed with this, but you may appreciate the fact that they took this fragrance in sort of a different direction, right? I must say, so far, I'm really, really enjoying Sauvage Elixir. Do I love it? I, I can't say I love it. I'm enjoying it. I really do like it a lot. I'm not in love with it, but I do appreciate the fact that they are giving us something different. So in that aspect, I do appreciate this. But again, is it a love for me? No. Neither one of these actually are a love for me right now. We'll see if that changes once I give these more once I give these fragrances more wearings and I get more familiar with them. Maybe my thoughts and opinions then will change. Oftentimes that does happen with fragrances. So yeah. Um Still feel the same way about this. I'm not changing my mind. I'm a little let down right now by the uh, the ombre leather. We'll see how, if that does change after, like I said, become more familiar with this one. Um, both are definitely solid. You know, that's the connoisseur of, you know, my fragrance connoisseur brain speaking on <clears throat> ombre leather. Excuse me, had to clear my throat there. Sauvage. Not a love, but I really do enjoy this, again, like I've been saying. So that's my first impression of these two fragrances. Stay tuned, guys. I have a lot of stuff coming up, man. I have uh, Dior's uh, Vanilla Diorama coming up. I also have Zaharoff Rosé, a review for that, coming up as well. And then there's uh, some more reviews coming that have skipped 
that have skipped my mind. They have left my mind at the moment. But uh, when you see them come up, you'll be like, oh, that's what he was talking about. <laughs> so anyway, guys, until the time comes for all these reviews, take care of each other. Love each other. I appreciate you guys spending uh, time with me today. I really sincerely do appreciate that. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Peace.